All right, this is section 3.2. We're going to look at a new definition or new set of definitions, one-to-one -one and onto transformations. We'll first take a look at the goals. Uh, we'll do some examples, and then during those examples, we'll define what it means to be a one-to-one -one transformation, and then we'll define what it'll be to be an onto transformation. So by the end of this, uh, you should be able to take a transformation and determine whether it's one-to-one -one or it's not one-to-one. -one. You should also be able to take that same transformation and determine whether it's onto or not onto. And you should be able to use the uh, matrix associated with a linear transformation, put it in reduced row echelon form, and then interpret what the meaning is in, in terms of onto versus one-to-one -one when looking at the reduced row echelon form. So back when you took calculus or pre-calculus, you talked about uh, functions that are one-to-one. -one. And the idea is this, if you pick a value of y in the range of the function, so we're assuming we take a value for y, the question is how many values of x are associated with that? So in this example, what is this? This is sine of x. There's multiple values of x associated with that value for y. And because there's more than one, I can find a value of y where there's more than one value of x associated with this solution to that equation. In this case, there's a problem in that if we try to uh, find x given y, we don't get a unique solution, and that process is not a function. So uh, that's a problem. And, and if that's the case, Right? If there's multiple x's for a given y, we would say that this function is not one-to-one. -one. Now down here, if you look at this function, this is the exponential. If you take a value of y in the range of the function, there's always going to be exactly one x associated with that. In this case, this function then is one-to-one. -one. So if we look at this function, this is absolute value of x minus 1 over the absolute value of x. If you take any value of y in the range, I can find uh, there are values of y where there's going to be two values of x. So in this case, this function is not 1 to 1. And finally, let's look at this thing. This is the cube. If you take a value of y in the range, there's only going to be one value of x associated with it. So this function is 1 to 1. Now there's another property, you may not have seen this before, but here the, the next question we're going to ask is, is there going to be restrictions on the value for y? So these functions here that we're looking at now are transformations that go from R1 to R1. So these are scalar functions. They're not linear, but they're still transformations. In this case, the codomain is R1, but I'm restricted in terms of the range to a subset of the codomain. So I can only take values from minus 1 to 1, and anything outside of that just doesn't make sense. So because there's a restriction here, the range is not all of R1, then that's going to be a problem that there, i got to be careful what values of Y I pick. If that's the case, we would say that this function is not onto. So for a function to be onto, then all possible values of Y include any real numbers. So down here, if I'm looking at the exponential, I'm restricted to only numbers greater than zero, so this function is also not on two. For this function, this will actually go off to infinity and infinity, and here goes to minus infinity. This function is on two, and this function as well, uh, the values of y that are possible are from minus infinity to infinity, so this thing is on two. So we're going to look at these two things. 1 to 1 and on 2. On 2 basically says that if a solution exists to y equals f of x given y, then it's unique. On 2 says there's no restriction on the values of y that we're going to pick. Any, uh, any vector possible is going to be okay. And 
they're two different ideas and they have to be checked separately. So it's possible for a function to be neither one-to-one -one nor onto. It's possible for it to be one-to-one -one but not onto. It's possible for a function to not be one-to-one -one but also be onto. But a function could also be both. So they're two different kind of things. Function can be one or the other, both or neither. So let's look at an example. So here we're going to go from R2 to R2. So I'm going to take a vector in R2 and I'm going to return right, some other vector in R2. So if this is some vector x and that's some vector u, so I'm saying tx equals u, I would like to know if you give me the value of u, what does that say about the values for x and y? So let's suppose I give you some other vector, we'll call it u and v, for the two components. Can I figure out what is the solution here? So I'm going to put this in an augmented matrix. So first column is 1, 1, second column is 1, minus 1. And I want to know when is that equal to uv. So now I'm going to put this in reduced row echelon form. So how am I going to do that? So this is my pivot. So I go to the first row, and I can use the first column. I want to get a 0 there, so I'm going to take R2 minus R1. So I'm going to leave the first low row alone. And this is going to be what? 1 minus 1 is 0. Minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. It's going to be V minus U. So now I go to the second row. There's my pivot. I want that to be a 1. So I'm going to take minus 1 half of row 2. What do I get? So I'll leave the top row alone. So I'll get a 1 there. I'll get minus 1 half of v minus u. So now this is my pivot. And now I'm going to go up and put zeros above that. So this is going to, going to take my row 1 and subtract row 2. So that'll give me a 0 there. If I do that, so I'm going to leave that row alone. I have 1 minus 0, 1 minus 1, and u minus a minus 1 half v minus u. So I get that. Now I got to interpret what this means. So if I go to solve this, so what is this? This is the x row. And this is the y, sorry, I should say x column. This is the y column. If I go to solve this, if I look into every column, there is a pivot, and that means there's going to be a unique solution for y given any v and u. Right? And I got to be careful. So in this case, there's no restrictions on v and u. So if you give me a valid v and u, which is, could be anything in this case, there's a unique y, and there's going to be only one value for x. So the solution here is going to be unique. So in this case, this is one to one because each of these columns has a pivot. Is it on to? Well, if I look at the rows, given any u and v, I can always solve for either x or, or for both x and y. So if I look at the rows, I can always solve this, and there's a pivot in every row, so there's no ambiguity. So this thing is also on to. So what does it say? This says that you give me any u in R2, I'm going to find a unique x and y, and there's no restriction on what this is. So because there's no restriction on that, it's onto, and because this is unique, this is going to be one to one. Let's look at another example. All right, I'm going to do the same thing. So what is this one? This transformation is taking something in R3, and it's giving me back something in R2. So I'm going to take a 3D vector and I'm going to get something in the XY plane. So I've got some vector here X and that's going to give me some vector U. So let's suppose this is equal to some UV and I want to know can I, is there any restriction on UV 
And if there is, then this can't be onto, because it's not going to be the whole art, uh, 2D plane. And then I'm going to ask, is the solution unique for valid values of u and v? And if that's the case, it'll be one to one. So let's get out our augmented matrix. Oops, sorry, that should be u and v from there. So let's see. So this is going to be my pivot. I want to get a 0 there. So I'm going to take r2 and subtract 2 times r1. So I'm going to leave that alone. So I'm going to take 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 minus 6 is minus 2. And then I'm going to take 6 minus 8 is minus 2. So this is going to be oops, v minus 2u. And now this is my pivot. And I want to make that a 1. So I'm going to take minus 1 half row 2. So I'll get 1, 3, 4. You. I'm going to leave that row alone. I'm going to get 0, 1, 1. And this is going to be minus 1 half v minus 2u. So now this is my pivot. I want to get a 0 there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take r1 and I'm going to subtract 3 times row 2. So that'll give me 3 minus 3. Let's see. So I'm going to leave this row alone. So this is going to be 1 minus 3 times 0, 3 minus 3 times 1, 4 minus 3 times 1. This is going to be u minus a minus 3 halves v minus 2u. OK, so let's go back. So this is the x column, the y column, and the z column. If I look at each row, there's a pivot in each row. So that means I can figure out values for x, y, and z. And I can always, no matter what values of u and v I put here, I can figure out at least one solution. So this thing's going to be on to. But notice if I look at the columns, this column does not have a pivot. So that means that there's going to be some ambiguity. Right? There's going to be multiple z's that uh, I can use that will satisfy uh, this equation for the right values of x and y. So because my solutions are not unique, this is not one to one. Right? So for example, what does this row say? This row says x plus z is equal to u plus 3 halves v minus 2u. Now remember, you're given u and v, so this is just some fixed number. This row says y plus z equals whatever number this turns out to be. So if t there's going to be infinite solutions for this, because I can say x equals this minus z and y equals this minus z if I solve for the pivots. So if you give me z equals 0, I can find a solution. Uh, you say z is 1, I can find a solution. And z could be any real number. So there's going to be infinite solutions. So it can't be 1 to 1.